Hello, this is Erin Swenlin with DecisionPoint.com, bringing you my charting the second half. And I'm going to look at quite a bit, and we're going to be focusing in on some monthly charts. I might possibly pull up a few weekly charts. But what I want to cover, of course, are those major indexes. We got to look at all the sectors and see what's going to happen there. Dollar, of course, is very important. Uh, gold, I'm going to cover gold, and then gold miners have been of a, a particular interest. I'll definitely cover oil, and then I'll finish off with bonds. I wanted to go over these major areas for you in preparation for what we might see going into the second half of the year. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to let everybody know that my website is decisionpoint.com. I write a DP alert market review letter every day. Carl does it on Fridays. And then I have my new product, Decision Point Diamonds, where I give you 15 stock picks per week. And you get 60 stock picks per month for only $25 right now. If you'd like to try us out, just subscribe to our bundle package, use the coupon code DP trial, and you will get your first week for free. All right, but let's go ahead and get started on looking at some charts. So we really should, of course, start off with the S&P, I would say. We follow the SPY mostly. Uh, I'm going to look at the one year daily, and this is being recorded July 1st, as you see the date there. So uh, I'm just going to give you kind of my look currently and some of the things that I'll be watching for when we go into the second half of the year. So one of the things that obviously 2020, oh my goodness, let's face it, this has just been a crazy year, but I have to say it's been quite profitable. Ultimately, a lot of us lost a lot of money going on the way down, uh, but coming back out of this, it's been actually kind of a, a sort of a fun ride. When I watch my diamonds, uh, the stocks that I pick, uh, so far, you know, we're doing pretty well with those. And, you know, looking at the market right now, uh, as of July 1st, you know, we're in this triangle, symmetrical triangle. And, you know, my, my indicators, they're really mixed right now. I've got the momentum, my price momentum oscillators getting ready to turn up. And of course we watch the VIX very, very closely. And I invert mine because I like to have oversold on the bottom and overbought on the top. And one of the things I watch is to see where the VIX is in relation to its moving average. And what I found in my studies is that when the VIX spends all of its time below its moving average, that's when you need to be aware that there is weakness in the market. Notice we came back down here and the VIX filled up uh, punctured that lower Bollinger Band, but just couldn't get above its average until today. And, you know, this period of trading, you can see was really a mixed area of trading. You know, we've really ultimately not gone very far um, from when we dropped to where we are now. And that's one of the things that I like to watch is what that VIX is doing, not necessarily just what it's, uh, what it what it says as far as it's reading, but where it is and where it's located and how it's uh, behaving. And of course, volatility has been quite high. I uh, kind of missed those days when we were looking at readings well below 20. And now the average, well, we're sitting on average at about uh, 23, 31. So it's, it's been a rough time of it. But let's go ahead and start looking a little bit further out on the one year here we've got the one year so let's go ahead and look at a monthly chart of the spy and this is really showing you that you know we are still in a secular bull market trend even though we lost this we had that huge crash the bear market crash over covid and even even with that we're still holding on to this secular bull market trend trend line you can see we had that con continuation pattern and you know obviously this has been a really rough time we, we've come back we did test these lows just about and that's when we got that rebound so what are we going to be looking for in the future so one of the things that are, are very important to us in a longer term would be our monthly pmo and one of the reasons i like this one is because we don't get a whole lot of 
uh, movement as far as signals go. Uh, typically, you get one signal maybe for two years, a year. We've had a little bit more action here since we've gotten more action in price. Uh, but mainly, I want to watch where those signals go. Really unusual to see what we did was that monthly buy signal, that PMO buy signal. It came in at the end of the year. As we were going into 2020, everything looked great. And then, of course, uh, that first month in February, we really lost quite a bit. And it's not a surprise to see that the PMO was really taken down by that. But right now it is starting to rise again. What I want to see is it to get up above its signal line. Notice when we do get those buy signals, they pretty much come uh, right when you want them to, with the exception, I would say, right here of that last buy signal. But again, you know, we, we are experiencing something that uh, the market, certainly the indicators, none of us really were prepped for, and we were headed out uh, moving quite high to the upside. However, there were a few things that did warn us that there might be a problem, and one of those would be the new uh, golden and silver cross indexes that we have. Um, these are telling us the Golden Cross, you're probably very familiar with, the 5,200-day moving average crossovers. Uh, this tracks how many of the stocks, uh, the percentage of the S&P 500 have Golden Crosses. They're 50 above their 200. And you can see we had a lot of damage that was done on this bear market low, and we're finally starting to catch up a little bit. Of course, we're hiccuping right now as we form that triangle that I was showing you earlier. But overall, you know, when I look at the Golden Cross and the Silver Cross, you know, the main thing is with the very long term coming into, you know, the rest of the year, this is one to watch. Uh, and you can see we are on that buy signal. It did tip over here, but it does look like it's ready to turn back up. And we're also seeing the same thing out of our Silver Cross Index, which is measuring how many stocks have their 20-day EMA above their 50-day EMA. So it's looking pretty good here. Going into the beginning of this year, when I look at the Golden Cross, it is rising. That's exactly what we want to see. You can see back here at the beginning of 2019 where we got that crossover uh, buy signal. You can see it came in back here. That's what we want to see. We got the buy signal. Now we just need to see it continue higher. And honestly, it's looking fairly good for that. I, I've been confounded by this market because I keep thinking with the economy, with the virus, with earnings, with uh, you know people out of work, it just isn't uh, it's just hard to wrap my mind around what's going on with the market. So what did I do to get through that is I became a technical analysis purist. <laughs> I, only, I only really consider the charts. Uh, you know, earnings, I'll throw that in there. Um, but overall, I'm just really going to focus in on my indicators and what they're doing and try not to let the, honestly, at this point, noise of the coronavirus get too far into my consciousness as I'm doing my analysis. So right now, uh, one of the nice things to see coming into this second half of the year is we got very, very oversold readings here on the amount of stocks within the uh, S&P that have PMO crossover buy signals, mainly meaning that their PMO is above the signal line. And it we saw some really... Um, bad movement here. And interestingly, you know, we were finally getting that move to the upside, but even with, we were declining here going into June and it really um, matched up with what was going on in price. But now we've turned up in very oversold territory and that always gives me a good feeling. You can see back here, you can see uh, also where we had, let's see, those same kind of readings back here. Uh, and, and back here, when we start to see that move to the upside on those. So I'm looking uh, for the next couple of months. I think we're going to be okay. Uh, we've got a really nice bullish bias going on in this uh, move out of that bear market low. So having that uh, bull market bias is helpful. Now, of course, we do see a BMO on a sell signal and heading lower. Uh, not what you want to see, but um, that's more of a short term uh, picture. So 
I'm going to go ahead and I want to pull up just a few of uh, the other broad market indexes. And I want to start off with the NASDAQ 100. Obviously, a much different picture in comparison to what we've been seeing on the S&P 500. Clearly, a very uh, strong uptrend. We've gotten past the all-time highs. And you know, technology really does seem to be that sector that has been performing quite well, even to a degree of being a defensive type sector in what's going on right now. And the stay at home, that all helps with that. The problem we do have is we do have a, a PMO sell signal that's come in here. I've got that marked. We had just gotten the buy and then we've turned back down. So we have a PMO sell signal. It is trying to turn up. But let's get a bigger picture here of the monthly version. Right now, you know, I've, I have been concerned and Carl and I had been concerned about a, a parabolic type of a move here with technology. Uh, but, you know, the more we've gone into it, I can see more of a rising trend and not so much parabolic move. And the good news is, unlike the S&P 500, we do have that crossover buy signal for the long term. And that actually did come in back at the end of May. So that gave us a little bit of, um, you know, we, we had an idea of what was getting ready to happen. We were already starting to move to the upside. It told us to look for good things in June. And we did see, well, mostly good things in June till the end. All right. The other one I want to look at really uh, shortly here is the OEX, the S&P 100. I'm going to make this nice and big for us. And very similar situation with that symmetrical type triangle that's forming right now on the OEX. But we do have that sell signal. Uh, we do have what we call a reverse divergence. Notice that the OBV top is higher than the previous and matching that with price moving lower. Price should follow volume. When you start to see higher volume or higher tops on the OBV and you do not see that with price, that's a warning flag. So keep your eyes open. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the sectors very quickly. And this is the sector chart list that Carl and I uh, well, Carl actually annotates every day and is available on our website. Uh, if you click on the charts within our chart list on our website as a subscriber, you can click on it and it'll bring you right to where we're at right now on the stock charts workbench and you can save these charts. So uh, subscribers, let's uh, get that benefit. All right, so we've been in that rising trend on XLC. We broke down, but look at the, the, the move that we're seeing to the upside. But what, what does our monthly chart look like here? All right, we have all those lines in there. We're still on a nice rising trend. Uh, the PMO for the monthly PMO has turned up out of oversold territory. It does look like it's ready to make that crossover buy signal. So XLC is starting to look much better. Let's look at consumer discretionary. We got a breakdown there, but really it's acting like the market. We're consolidating mostly sideways. And I look at all of these indicators. Notice we have the golden cross, silver cross. We have those for each of our sectors. So we can get a, a nice look. And the golden cross is really that long-term picture that we wanna look at. And you can see that we've got rising golden cross. Uh, we're still only at about a, less than a third of XLC are on buy signals in the long term with their 50 above their 200. So it's it's been a rather soft sector. Um, let's look at the, I'm gonna take a look at the weekly chart here. Really big decline, V bottom. And we did get the, the move to the upside. And honestly, out of a V bottom, we should expect to see that top uh, back here from earlier 2020. We should see that uh, broken and see it get higher. We did get a little bit higher right here at an all-time high for XLY. All right, let's go with consumer staples. 
And you can see, not very sexy. They generally aren't. <laughs> they move mostly sideways. Uh, but they're a great place usually to be when the market is uh, having difficulty. Uh, they really did. They were the first to come out of that bear market low with, uh, with steam. Uh, they formed what looks like you could make a case for kind of a cup with a handle. But we never really quite got the breakout. We're still moving sideways. I really look at this um, area of the market as my hedge. I generally will put a few of these in my portfolio just to hedge against the market. Obviously, you're still going to hit these very bad declines if the whole market is uh, going through that. But I do like that area. XLE Energy has really been making a move, a nice move out of that bear market low. It's coming back down. It's starting to test some support here. Momentum's not looking that great. Silver Cross, we're seeing the stocks uh, falling out of bed there. We're getting these low readings on the stocks above their 20 and 50. And look at that Golden Cross, not even 4% of the energy index stocks are on long-term trend model buy signals. Financials. All right, we see a rising trend. I keep waiting for financials to really break out and show some strength, but I think with all of the uh, stimulus, the uh, CARE Acts, all of the various uh, money that's being pushed through the system with the loans has really, I think, given them, uh, put them behind a bit. And you can still we're, still, we're still seeing some deterioration here, so I'm not really looking for XLF to do much. We are getting to almost a quarter of the XLF uh, components uh, with golden crosses though. But I, I would wanna see much more. We are seeing a rise. I, I'm not a fan of the financials right now going into the second half of the year, but I think that they will, by the end of the year, they might be an interesting place to look. Uh, healthcare, another defensive area that really enjoyed quite the rally off the bear market low. Uh, just because of what we've been discussing as far as the virus goes. There are a lot of biotechs, pharmaceuticals, medical supplies, and there are still some winners out there to be had. Right now, in uh, looking into the next few months or even next month, I notice we have a nice rising trend. Flat top, that is an ascending triangle. We should expect a break out there. I would look for breaks to new all-time highs. I think once we're starting to see um, some more action coming in out of healthcare, as far as these, the uh, packages that are helping the hospitals and the insurance companies, uh, but when we start seeing those vaccines and all of those sorts of uh, additions into the market, environment because of the virus, I think we'll start to see healthcare pass up its all-time highs. All right, industrials. And here you go. Similar looks you're seeing on most of these. Decline, the, pr the momentum isn't doing so well. We're losing those silver cross, but we still have a good amount in this index, in the industrials, that are still participating, if you will. Their 20-day EMAs are above their 50s. PPI is looking good. We're noticing these rising bottoms that are supporting this rally. Uh, we got a nice bounce off of that area of support right here, very strong area. Right now, the 200-day EMA seems to be the problem here for XLI, but honestly, this is one of those areas that I have been a fan of, and you can see that we're getting that weekly chart. The weekly PMO is on a buy signal. And if you look at the monthly chart, we are seeing that PMO on a decline still after a top below the, the signal line, which is especially bearish. But we're starting to come out of that, that from that bear market low. We're making that move up. We've now started to be in territory here above those six and 10 month EMAs. Materials, uh, we just happened to get a buy signal on um, today, 50, 200 day EMA uh, crossover gave us a long-term buy signal, so you can guess that I'm gonna be uh, feeling pretty bullish going into the second half with materials. It's uh, been a, an interesting area, uh, to say the least, but we're getting that breakout from that symmetrical triangle. The PMO is turning up, and I like that confirmation with our OBV. And you have enough, uh, read, the readings are high enough here in the 60s, 70s for room for improvement. They can move even higher. And look at the Golden Cross. Almost half of that index now is their 50 over their 200s. Quick look at real estate. 
And let's go pop this one into a weekly chart. There we go. All right, so you can see that we have the PMO buy signal coming in on the weekly chart for real estate, and we have a nice rising trend. This has been rather interesting area uh, going through what we are currently. Um, and and I, I'm just, I, the picture is still a little blurry for me. Uh, we have kind of some different looks here, but looking at that monthly chart, we are in very oversold territory and it is trying to decelerate and move to the upside. I just think that it's the picture is still a little fuzzy for real estate going into the, the second half. Uh, I'm gonna remain mostly neutral on real estate. Technology, like I said, nice rising trend. Uh, you've got all of the information you want. This was a really good note. Notice all those negative divergences and the crossover sell signals. And those came in with these rising tops and then we got the decline. But you know what? The bullish bias of this market, it stayed the course on that rising trend. Technology still looks very healthy. And if we look at a monthly chart for, for it, a little bit of a parabolic here, but honestly, if you start um, looking at these rising bottoms, you're in good shape. Uh, we're not looking at a parabolic so much as just a nice long-term rising trend. And notice that, the PMO is still rising at this point. All right, last one is utilities, and then I'm gonna move on and we're gonna look at dollar, gold, oil, and bonds. And here we go, so utilities. Uh, really another defensive area of the market and like the staples and have been moving mostly sideways, but there certainly has been opportunity to get in and ride some of these rallies. And what it looks like to me is we're about ready to get another one of those rallies back up to overhead resistance. Notice how these indicators have all started to perk up. They look much healthier. This is the kind of chart you wanna see, rising PMO, RSI, RSI is now above 50. Um, Utilities, at least in the shorter term, in July 1st are starting to look pretty good. But let's look at that monthly chart. And there you go. We've got a PMO sell signal on the monthly chart. So a lot of work to do to get that PMO to turn back up. But you notice it is now reaching that oversold territory, an area where we could see that turn to the upside. That's what we want to watch for on these monthly charts as we go into next year. All right, let's go into the dollar. I follow UUP, the ETF for the dollar. I'm gonna just make this big for us all. Right now, uh, UUP, the dollar is really looking quite bearish. Uh, despite this PMO buy signal, I'm noticing this double top, the inability to get above this area of overhead resistance. I was counting on it to get up here to the stronger area of overhead resistance, but it can't even seem to challenge these highs back here from November. And we're forming what could end up being a double top. Look at that RSI turning over. Dollar doesn't look quite so good. And you've got a reverse divergence going on here too. Notice that the higher highs on the OBV, but lower lows when you're looking at price tops, uh, not something you wanna see on a chart. So I'm not really a fan of the dollar currently in the shorter term. If we look at the weekly picture, you can see that we did have kind of a, a serious breakdown out of this rising wedge, which of course you're supposed to expect that. Quite a bit of volatility, of course, going on uh, with the coronavirus, but we've managed to come back down into this area of consolidation. $26 is more important than it may appear when you look at that daily chart. This is the area you don't wanna see price break down from. Uh, I would be watching that level very closely if I were holding UUP right now. And looking at that monthly chart, notice it's turning over. We're losing that support that we had right here from 2018 up through 2020. This will need to hold, again, $26 for UUP. That is the line in the sand that I'm going to be watching as we move forward. All right. Let's continue forward with gold. Okay, so with gold, it's now on a rising trend. We got that nice breakout. I do uh, recall reading an article lately from John Murphy uh, talking about uh, gold and being bullish on it. And it's no surprise. We did get a big pullback today. So 
I, I wasn't surprised to see the RSI pull back, obviously, and turning over, the PMO is starting to decelerate and try to turn, it wants to turn back down. But what we want to watch for going into the next quarter is these uh, discounts and premiums on the physical gold trust. And what we do is we, we see if uh, based on what is currently the um, net asset value and compare that to what they actually are holding and what it is worth, you can get a premium or a discount. And discounts mean that you have very you have bearish sentiment going on and premiums mean that you have very bullish sentiment going on. Typically, you know, sentiment being contrarian, it's something that we do want to watch because when things get very, very, very bearish, that's usually when you start to see those turns. So something to keep an eye on. Let's go ahead and look at a weekly chart. You can see that rising trend is continuing for gold. The weekly PMO is still rising. And if you look on the monthly basis, excellent looking chart. We're still getting that move to the upside. Uh, you can see the big saucer that we had and there was a, a handle. This was annotations that Carl put in. And you can see we're just getting back up there, um, ready to start testing those all time highs for gold. Uh, looking very good though, look at that monthly PMO. All right, gold miners. This, like I said, has been a very interesting area to me. Uh, I'm going to leave the chart a little bit smaller. We have a cup handle breakout. That's exactly what we want to see. That tells us we should expect a break above that previous cardinal high. PMO is on a buy signal. We do have some overbought readings here with the silver cross uh, percent of stocks above their 50, uh, both at 100%. But as you can see, if you're in a nice rally, those overbought conditions can persist over a month's weeks. So not to worry. I'm looking at uh, good things for gold miners going forward. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that monthly chart though for gold miners. And look at that nice PMO buy signal. We even had a bottom that occurred above the signal line, which I always find especially bullish. Uh, lots of upside potential here. This is an area though that we need to watch given these lows back here. Uh, we're getting ready to test that, but you know, you can make a case for a nice um, rounded bottom here uh, as we've moved above that area of a confirmation, that breakout from that saucer. It's looking pretty good here for GDX and the gold miners. All right, just a few more here. Uh, USO and this is oil. We've started to follow the uh, WTIC after the split with USO. It's just gotten confusing. And this doesn't play very nice with our trend models necessarily, but it does give us the right picture. And that overhead resistance, uh, part of the gap, it's been filling it back and forth, but it hasn't been able to really overcome and push past that 200 day EMA. And you also have the PMO sell signal. You know, it's been an interesting move moving around here for, for oil. Uh, haven't been a fan. It is starting to pull back out. Uh, these are some trading ranges that you can keep an eye on for uh, WTIC in the shorter term. Uh, but looking at that PMO buy signal coming in on this weekly chart, I think that looks quite positive. You look at a monthly chart and same thing. We're looking at some great moves and a nice buy signal that's just popped in here. Let's finish off with bonds. And as you can see, PMO buy signal on the way. We are seeing that tipping over. I'm actually looking at this as a possible add to my portfolio as it reaches this area of very strong support. Given that buy signal momentum is still moving to the upside, I have to say I still like bonds. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Check out the RSI, which is above net neutral currently. Let's look at that monthly chart and then I'm gonna sign off everybody. All right, here we go, a nice uh, parabolic. Uh, we usually don't like to see those because they are gonna usually break down very quickly. But I'm, I'm not too worried right now. You can see that that 10 month EMA, that purple line is holding up nicely as support since we came out of the lows at the end of 2018. That buy signal on the PMO, that monthly PMO is still rising nicely, not particularly overbought, somewhat overbought. So something to pay attention to. 
All right, it has been my pleasure to join you for charting the second half. I wish you all good luck. Check me out, decisionpoint.com, and happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.